Well, what's with this uh, unending assault on science? Why do oil billionaires like the Koch brothers fund attacks on things like evolution? Could it be that science says global warming is happening? I don't know. I don't get it. Stephen Meyer is with us, author of Signature in the Cell. Uh, subtitle of his new book, Dar- uh, the title of his new book, Darwin's Doubt, the subtitle, The Explosive Origin of Animal Life in the Case for Intelligent Design. Um, he's with the Discovery Institute, which is uh, one of these uh, think tanks that, well, uh, that a federal ju- a court has said the Institute manufactures the controversy, as well as the American Association for the Advancement of Science, that manufactures the controversy they want. Uh, to teach by promoting a false perception that evolution is a theory in crisis. Stephen, welcome. Uh, great to be with you again, Tom. We talked four years ago, I think, uh, and I appreciate being on your program. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I don't get it. Why, why are you guys constantly trying to cast aspersions on science? Well, you know, there's a, uh, I love the old Dylan phrase, you can't criticize what you don't understand. And... Um, I'm really happy to answer critical questions about the work that we do, uh, that I do, but um, I'm not sure you've characterized the position that I'm taking accurately. I'm not anti-science. I'm doing scientific work. And the fact is that if you get into the literature in evolutionary biology itself, what you find is that there is a breadth of really uh, deep criticism about some of the fundamental aspects of evolutionary theory. And the book that I've written uh, actually tells the story of one of those concerns that has been around since Darwin's time itself. It was in The Origin of Species. Darwin expressed concern about an event in the remote past known as the Cambrian Explosion, the sudden appearance of animal life in the fossil right. record. And what, what Darwin didn't know is that that, is that, and that come of it and how it's grown up to be illustrative of a fundamental crisis in evolutionary biology as illustrated not only by the criticisms that evolutionary biologists are making of standard neo-Darwinian theory, but also as illustrated by their attempts to generate new theories of evolution. And there are six such new theories that I address in the book. Clearly, any field that is, in a, is, uh, uh, has a stable, established position is not in that kind of ferment when there are so many different theories being proposed to try to explain a fundamental problem like the origin of form and the origin of biological information, two, two key things I address in the book. Yeah, and Plato addressed this, too. He said, you know, uh, if, you, if you have read Plato and his whole theory of the, the shadow in the cave, you know, that all of reality is just a, an attempt to replicate the pure and true form that exists in the meta world, basically. Uh, but the, the, none of that, uh, yeah, A... You and I talked about this last time. Yeah, we did. It does go back all the way to the ancient Greeks, which is one of the reasons why it's... But what so the ancient Greeks right. didn't know is that there was a time in the United States, Stephen, when, or a time in the world, excuse me, there was a time in the history of this planet when the atmosphere was principally not made up of oxygen. It was principally made up of nitrogen and sulfur. And there were, there were bacteria that evolved and, and, and plants that evolved, principally plants that evolved, that, that metabolized that nitrogen and produced as a waste product oxygen. And that that well, waste product, this, that, that the like, atmosphere that? shifted to a primarily oxygen atmosphere, and there was a massive extinction associated with that, and then there was an explosion of oxygen-based life, or oxygen-consuming life forms. Okay, then you, uh, so you're, you're, you're proposing the, oxygen, the oxygenation of the pre-Cambrian atmosphere generated Cambrian animals? How does uh, an increase in oxygen uh, produce new genetic code? How does it produce the epigenetic information that's needed to build an animal? There's no connection. The way that any there. genetic code is produced by evolution, that, by, 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 by hundreds of billions biology. of random mutations every second, there's a billion of them going on in your body uh, every uh, second, right, let me, let me and some specific. of those mutations no, survive and most things. of them don't. You're, you're just asserting things. Let me, let me give you a real... I'm not asserting things. This is, this is Science 101. Let, no, no, I, 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 I'm, I've done some Science 101. Let me give you some, and I want you to react to it. There is, a, there is a, a problem in evolutionary theory. It's called the problem of embryonic lethals. Lots of people like to wave their hands and say that mutations have all this almost magical power. But if you want to build a new animal body plan, which is what is arising in the Cambrian explosion, several, almost two dozen new animal body plans arise in the Cambrian explosion, you have to change the form of animals very early in the developmental trajectory of an animal. That means you ha- the mutations have to occur early to affect the cell divisions that are taking place that are going to affect everything downstream in the development of an animal from embryo to adult form. 
The problem is that the mutations, the kind that you would need to do that, early acting body plan mutations, are not only deleterious, they're always lethal. They produce something called embryonic lethals. And this is the product of Nobel Prize winning research in developmental biology. And I have a whole chapter in the book just on this one. I look at five separate problems that the neo-Darwinian mechanism faces. This is just one of those five. But the problem of embryonic lethals for those early acting body plan mutations is huge because what it's showing is that the kind of mutations you would need to build a Cambrian animal form, we don't get. The kind we get, we do get mutations. Some of them are beneficial, but if they occur late in the development of an animal, they're not going to change body plan development. So this, this is a real scientific problem. And you're it is not a scientific the work problem. That I've done by, by and, and the work that you have done is a tautology. Science. It's not science. You, you have started out with the premise that there is an intelligent creator. No, that I didn't start with the premise that there's an intelligent creator. You absolutely creator. have, no, no, Stephen. No, no, no. That is the, that and, is and the people who are funding your work have started out with that premise. Or, or that no, no, there's a you, problem you, you with science. the work again. It's not a foundational premise. The, the people who make presuppositions are those who presuppose that, that science may not consider the possibility of a non-materialistic explanation, and yet there are phenomena in our experience, namely the presence of digital information, that we know from experience always arises from an intelligent source, from a non-materialistic cause. You wouldn't walk into the, Rosetta, uh, into the British Museum and look at the Rosetta Stone and say, gee, isn't that wonderful what wind and erosion did? We know that there are certain types of phenomena that require intelligence. Just because production. human beings have written things down does not mean that a that a an all wise, all on all omnipotent creator of uh, who, uh, with I perfect form for created this universe. Creator. You're again misrepresenting my work. I argue that there must. You be are suggesting some, that some that there is intelligence for the that, information that arises in these big events in the history of life, and I'm doing that on the basis of our experience of cause and effect. What we know from our experience of cause and effect is that information, especially when we find it in a digital form, always arises from an intelligent agent. The what is the benefit to you and your fellow, uh, and and your fellow travelers and your funders in dumbing down an entire generation of American children? Uh, sorry, I didn't, hear, I didn't hear you talking over me. I don't, I don't what is really the benefit to you idea. and your funders and your, and your fellow travelers of dumbing down an entire generation of American yeah, no, children this, this and having them believe the that book. science is something and other than, and, 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 other than and, and, a valuable and, 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 and useful way to understand the world? Are you, are you interested in interviewing me? or just? Or just I asked you a question. You tried to interrupt me four times in the middle of my question. You were interrupting me. No, you asked me if we were interested in dumbing down. I said we're not interested in dumbing down. The very, this book has 753 scientific references. I just gave you a scientific argument about, about the problem of early acting body plan. It is not a scientific not argument, and many of your references are, are not scientific. And this is well, not why science. Why did a Harvard geneticist uh, praise the book then? Why did a Max, a Max Planck Institute geneticist pr praise the book? Why did a vast why did, why did paleontologists from Mount Holyoke praise the book? You know, why was there a scientist who was willing to say tobacco doesn't cause cancer? Why well, is there a scientist you, today willing to say the global warming is a hoax? Why do you interrupt me every time I get a halfway into a sentence? Well, then go ahead. Well, I just finished. I, I'm not defending uh, the, the, anything about tobacco. Uh, I, but I'm the people who fund a, you do. I'm making a scientific argument based on cutting-edge research in molecular biology, paleontology, developmental biology. And it's not anti-science, which is how you, you began the program. That's a caricature. All right. Well, I'll leave you with this, the, the final word. Stephen Mayer, Ph.D., uh, senior fellow with the Discovery Institute, and author of the new book, Darwin's Doubt. The website is darwinsdoubt.com. And, of course, the Discovery Institute. You can Google it. Um, Stephen, thank you for, or Steve, thank you for being with us. Thanks for the spirit of conversation. Thanks. And his previous book is Signature in This Cell. We'll be right back.